just got back from the Keys. A bit of an adventure. <laughs> Mostly the road trip. Because what would normally be, what, a 12 hour trip? Yeah. 11 hour trip. It took us 18 hours. Mainly because of traffic. But we did get a flat tire on the trailer. Yes. That ate up about three hours. Yeah, that was three hours. We didn't have a spare. Although... Somebody suggested a spare. But someone else said, no, we don't need a spare. I can fix it if we get a flat tire. Yep. Bought a plug system, a plug kit, and got, we have a air compressor already. So I figured, you know, if we got a flat, it's just going to be a nail. When I mean, the tires are pretty much brand new on the trailer. So if anything, it would just be a nail. But what ended up happening is we we're, I mean, we were almost into the, to the road that leads into Key Largo from Homestead and we we're getting gas we we're going to fill up the boat there we thought it would be a little bit cheaper than going in and uh, when i was cutting into the gas station i cut it hard and hit hit the curb and it's a triaxle trailer so when you're it doesn't really pivot that well so the front one of the front tires hit the side of the curb and blew out the sidewall of the tire a couple uber calls and a, and a walmart trip um, we got the tire fixed and I ended up buying a spare tire. So now we have a spare tire. recording coming down because it was a bit of a, a stressful trip you know we were in a hurry to get stuff loaded up I think we packed probably a little too much stuff a lot too much yeah so that's a good word of advice um, we knew we were gonna be on a small boat um, but I think we packed as if we were staying in a 2,000 square foot condo and you know we just wanted to have everything just in case but we didn't have room for just in case everything. Yeah, uh, it's a problem for me because I'm a just in case girl. Yeah, we probably used a third of what we brought, I think. Yeah. And we used the yeah. plates. The plates were good. We didn't play any board games. I mean, by the time we were done with the day, we were pretty tired. We we watched right. a movie each night. It was a good time to stay cool in the boat. The air conditioning worked great. Yeah. Too good almost. Yeah. I mean, it was. <laughs> we want to leave. It's pretty cold on the boat. It reminds me of our first night there. We couldn't get the, we got there at about, what, 7 o'clock at night? Yeah. And it turns out that there, the place that we stayed at, White Marlin Marina, which was a great marina, actually. Yeah. Um, they had a boat ramp. You know, I talked to the lady, yeah, we have a boat ramp, and I explained our boat and all that good stuff. And we get down there, it's like, oh, this is not going to, you're not going to be able to get this in. One, it was low tide. Two, uh, which that didn't end up being the problem, was the tide. It was the, the ramp itself. It was angled so much that, you know, our trailer is 30 feet long, if not more than that. The angle, it just, you bottomed know, out. we bottomed out on it. So we ended up staying the night. We were going to stay the night on the boat, but it was just so hot and we couldn't get plugged in to where the air conditioning would work. So because it just got so hot, we ended up sleeping in our expedition six of us and two dogs <laughs> that great. was a that was, that was probably the best or not the best but the memory that the kids will probably remember the most because it was so uncomfortable and, but it was cool you know we had the air conditioning going and yeah we ran the car all night yeah ran almost ran out of gas i mean we planned it we just you know had the lady communicated with us that that ramp may not support that you know we could have figured out an alternate location to to put the boat in which we ended up finding the next day. Yes. 
uh, which was a pretty decent boat ramp. I mean, that, that, that was worked a good out. Boat ramp. Yeah. Worked out pretty good. It was about five miles away from where we we're staying, but we worked it out to where we can get it in and, and over there. 33rd Street in Marathon. Yep, 33rd Street City Dock, uh, right by the Marathon Yacht Club. Um, it's a good place to put in. It's on the Gulf side. We were staying on the Atlantic side, um, but it was easy to get around, um, go through Vodka Cut. end of our trip on Friday well one Friday was the best day of them all as far as the water conditions you know it was just so choppy nice. I mean it was no swells really just choppy the water was good and we found the sandbar which we've gone by the sandbar we just didn't think of going there uh, right by Vaca Cut um, in Marathon but it was just it was a great place to go we met some cool people from uh, Seattle Washington that came down um, but it was, you know, about a foot and a half, two feet deep sandbar yeah. that uh, Sandy was able to walk around in, as you'll see in the video. Um, but it was a great little place. It was. Go. It was good. It's all stingrays. Stingrays. Yeah. Oh, a sea urchin. Yeah, that. Yeah. Ellie picked up a sea urchin. She didn't touch the sea urchin, but it was attached to something. And we're like, throw it down. We did bottom out the boat, which was a big deal. We got the guys. From we Seattle. didn't really bottom it out. You know. When we we anchored at the sandbar, but the boat moved and it just got stuck yeah. on the bottom. We didn't run over anything yeah. driving. Yeah, we're just we're pulling. We pulled the motors up and um, pulled it closer so um, Sandy can get out and not have to swim as far to get to the sandbar. And just over time, the the current pulled it over to the to the sand and, and got on the sand it was just it's just too heavy of a boat for us to push it took about four or five people to get it yeah. pushed off thankfully but, they were there yep all right so our tips what would be some tips that you'd give to other families doing the same thing and we've kind of given a couple we'll kind of go over that again other than don't bring as much stuff yeah just pack light you know we really only needed clothes, food, and clothes, food, towels, induction. Induction, yes. And our magma pots worked great. To they all put together in this little bitty space, about that big, and so that was good. Yeah. Um, and we didn't even need all the food we brought. Yeah. And we probably bought too many groceries down there because we didn't. Um, do as much preparation at home for a meal plan. bringing dogs bring a ramp for them to get from the dock to the boat and st especially a big dog if you have little dogs you're good but a big dog um, can
fall in between the dock and the boat very easily. Yeah, it wasn't a floating dock, it was, it was more of a pier. And so when the tide goes down, we're up really. I mean, there was just not. And we went up to the side instead of backing up to where the swim platform would be at the dock. But since it wasn't floating, you know, it was not easy for the dogs to get up and over. So we did lose Sandy over the edge one time. Almost, almost twice, twice, almost twice. We had a couple, um, I guess you could say maintenance issues, things. You know, the water, as you see in the video, was pretty choppy at some parts, and so it was rough, and so some things broke while we were out in the water. One of the curtains. The header. The header, the header. for the curtains fell, and I didn't necessarily have the tools to fix that. We tried to get it jimmy rigged up there. Buy a good cooler. Yeah. A good big cooler that the latches won't break. Our steps, swim steps kept oh, falling yeah. off, but that's going to be an easy fix. Yeah. Oh, the the chart plotter that I, I did a video on a chart plotter, I got a little iPad knockoff. That thing worked great. Yes. I mean, it was accurate. It was good. The little stand that I had was cheap. That didn't work too good, but the plotter itself was really good. So click on this link right here and you'll be able to see our video on that chart plotter by you know $125 with by the time you buy the plotter and the app it worked perfect I mean yeah. we were pinpoint accurate as far as the GPS goes on that thing it was bright enough you know I mean it was yeah, bright out was there good. I didn't you know it didn't bother me as not not being able to see it or anything um, I mean it worked good so if you want a, a cheap chart plotter the only problem we had was we just couldn't keep it charged. We I'd forget to charge it up, but um, but it worked great. So watch that video if you want a cheap chart plotter. And in the keys, you need a chart plotter because yeah. you need to know the depths because there's so many um, shallow areas. And without that, you know, you easily run ashore on something, bottom out, or damage your props and injure some people. So definitely have a chart plotter and I imagine in the Bahamas it'd be a similar situation because they have a lot of shallow water too. We didn't really get to do a whole lot of snorkeling because the, the whole week it was just too choppy. Yeah. I mean you couldn't, if we'd have been in the water we would have in a minute mm -hmm. been a hundred yards from the boat. It was just, it was too bad. Yeah. We ended up leaving Friday night instead of Saturday morning, which I think that was a good move on our part. Yes. Because we were talking to some people there, the where the ramp that we go in at um, in the mornings, it's heavy with fishermen. And so we didn't want to be stuck out there fighting the fishermen trying to get our boat out of there and leave out. So we ended up pulling out that that night, our Friday night. So we would miss all that. And then we wanted to get out of the Keys Friday night also because then we didn't want to fight all the people renting from Saturday to Saturday. Um, right. So we left that, that night and, and we good. got out of there. And we didn't really stop one time except for maybe a, a light. You know, but no right. traffic. Oh, there's literally no traffic um, getting out of the keys, and you know that could be pretty tough um, on Saturdays, especially in the morning. So we got out of there. We stayed at Fort Lauderdale. We made it up to Fort Lauderdale Friday night, and then made the trip from Fort Lauderdale all the way home Saturday. We hit some, some traffic again in South Carolina. I don't know, South Carolina needs to step it up and yeah. expand to three lanes because that's where it seems to be the issue. It was really smooth all the way up until South Carolina and then yeah. where it goes from three lanes in Georgia to two lanes in South Carolina all the way up 95 till we hit 26. It was awful. It was awful again, you know, that slow And even this afternoon hours. it was the same. Yeah. Some and friends we were, of ours were coming up, Tammy and um, Mike. Mike went to yeah. the Keys. Yeah. They were there this week. Oh, wow. And um, so 
she was texting me and saying that traffic in South Carolina was just awful. Yeah. Just the same, you know, cutting down to those two lanes. Yeah. So. It's no accidents. It's just yeah. congestion. So. And then, uh, so, and we were going through at night. I mean, it was, we, we hit South Carolina about, what, 10 o'clock, 9.30, 10 o'clock? Yeah. And, yeah, about 9.30, I think it was. But even at that time, for the ridiculous. two, three hours it took us to get from Georgia to 26, which is really only what, 65 miles, 70 miles, and it took several hours. And um, it was, at that time of night, it was bad, so. And I know it was spring break traffic, and maybe it's not like that most times, but we've we've gone through there, and it's been bad. Not as bad as this time, though. Right. I would highly recommend that White Marlin Marina. That was a, oh, that was was a great good. place. Yeah. We had a good tiki hut, um, grills. The bathrooms were nice and clean. Mm -hmm.